Hey guys, welcome to my Natural Academia. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a few things that you should avoid when you're first starting to take care of your hair. I know a lot of times when people start their natural hair journey or when they, in general, just start wanting to take care of their hair, they're a little bit confused on where to start. I mean, I, I understand that there are, there are millions of videos on the internet that kind of explain how to take care of your hair and such, but I feel like some of the messages that I've seen at least or when I was starting to try to take care of my hair was very contradicting. I didn't really know whether to get this product or that product or use this method or that technique and it was just very confusing so let me just put my little two cents on this discussion i was also planning on doing my hair as i talked to you guys i wanted to do some mini braids on my hair because i feel like i've been going around looking a little bit dusty for too long and i was gonna put some beads at the end of them i don't know if you guys can see that i had five packs of these beads and i put four of the packs inside this plastic baggie gonna have the last pack here just for demonstration and as you guys may or may not know the two products that i typically go for when i'm moisturizing my hair or doing any type of styles is the tgin daily moisturizer it looks like this on the inside it's a pretty thick cream and the uh, palmer's olive oil grow therapy i usually use this over the cream so this goes last on my head and it looks like this on the inside it's like a light greasy consistency and i'll also be using the end of a rat tail comb the only rat tail comb that I own to part my hair. I'm not gonna use a comb to detangle my hair because I don't detangle my hair with bristles, but I will be using it to part my hair to make my parts look nice. Anyways, just for those that are wondering, my hair is finger detangled. I just spent the past three, four hours finger detangling my whole head so that this video wouldn't be too long. And this is how it's looking like out. Give and dry, but we're gonna moisturize it for that reason. Well, the first thing that I wanted to talk about, something that I feel like people should try to avoid when first taking care of their hair is over manipulation. I know that when people start taking care of their hair, a lot of times they wanna do everything. They wanna try all the styles and everything. I mean, I know over manipulation is probably one of the most cliche things to tell somebody not to do to their hair. I mean, everybody knows pretty much not to over manipulate their hair. Um, at least I would hope. Manipulation in itself is not a bad thing when it comes to taking your, care of your hair because you have to moisturize it, you have to touch it to do it. You can't just let the hair sit on your head and not touch it. Like manipulation is a really big part when it comes to hair care of, of all hair textures and hair types. So it's not manipulation that is a problem when it t comes to taking care of natural hair. It's the over manipulation. So for example, um, when people have in a style for a week and then they decide to take it off because they just don't like it so then they do another style and then another style and then another style so every month they probably have like four or five different styles on their head in my opinion that would be considered over manipulation but i do understand that different hair textures and different hair types are able to manage manipulation at different rates but personally for my hair i know that it thrives better when i'm not touching it for at least three weeks and to piggyback off of the different styles that people do i know well when i was in school at least a lot of people would be doing these high ponytails where they would be having to use so many different types of combs and gels and they would be using all types of different products just to have their hair lay a certain way or look a certain way that is also considered over manipulation when you are sitting for three hours manipulating your hair to do something that it doesn't do naturally if that makes any sense i don't know if that makes any sense and after some time these girls or men or whoever doing their hair would notice that their edges are starting to thin out and then the back of their neck their nape is starting to thin out and they're wondering oh how how did this happen because you're over manipulating your hair and applying too much tension or stress on your hair strands another thing that can also cause a lot of tension to someone's hair is well, I see a lot of people do their edges a lot and no shade to the people that like to have laid edges. I really don't mind. Usually I just get a scarf to lay my hair down flat. But the edges are another big thing that causes a lot of tension on the front of our head. I feel like if you can, if you don't mind wearing your natural edges, um, just try to find a better technique or a product that helps you to achieve your desired look without causing so much stress on your hair strands. When I was younger, you know, everybody had the edges and stuff, and I really wanted my edges to lay down flat, so I would get all types of gels to try on my hair, Eco Styler, um, She's Bomb, all types of different gels to lay down my edges, and they did not work as well as I wanted to. And I was here on YouTube looking for ways to get my hair to lay down flat, and there were so many videos of people relaxing their edges 
and straightening their edges or even blowing their edges out to get that sleek or that naturally wavy look and and personally i'm a very lazy natural at heart so i never really found the courage or the desire to ever do these things but those are just some of the things i did notice that you know people would go to the lengths of even relaxing blowing out or even straightening their edges just to get that sleek down look and in my opinion it's not really worth it but but anyways that's essentially what i wanted to get through to you guys as my first reason over manipulation i know it sounds it sounds so cliche it just sounds so oh my gosh i have to manipulate my hair anyways but if you can just try to avoid doing a different style every week or doing a different style every other day and try to avoid doing styles that cause a lot of tension to your hair like um you know fancy updos unless you absolutely need to when you have an event that you're going to and you know it'll look cute if you can find a product that does that lays down your edges without having to put so much tension on them that would also be great but as well as doing any tight styles that cause a lot of tension on the perimeter of your head or even the middle of your head um i think that would also benefit you in the long run in addition to minimizing the amount of excessive styles that you do every month on your head. I have a feeling that my hair is gonna look extremely shrunken because of this TGIN moisturizer. I'm currently trying to look for something that does that gives me the moisturization effect that TGIN gives me, but not so much the shrinkage and the stickiness because it does feel a little bit sticky. But I don't know, aside from the fact that it makes my hair shrink so much, and my hair, I feel like I'm able to manipulate it and operate it a little bit better when it's in a stretch state. So I don't need nobody saying, oh my gosh, Natural Academia doesn't like her hair shrinking. Girl, I barely even wear my hair out to see it shrunken. The next thing I feel like you should try to avoid when taking care of your natural hair or when you're starting off is to try to avoid buying excessive and unnecessary products. I know when people first start off taking care of their natural hair, you know, they, I don't know if everybody does this or maybe it was just me. But when I was first starting to take care of my natural hair, I would go on YouTube a lot just to see you know what product that people would be using but then again i was kind of like i wasn't the most financially advantaged for lack of a better word i was like 12 years old when i decided to start taking care of my own hair or not necessarily decided but girl i had to anyways um i didn't really have much people to take care of my hair so i took it upon myself to start taking care of it and when i first started taking care of my hair the only thing that natural academia knew to use on her hair was grease and that's what i kind of uh, stuck to and even to this day I still use grease but the grease I used back then on my hair is not the same grease that I use nowadays but that's besides the point I would use the grease on my hair and then I would wash my hair with anything I could find so I wasn't doing any pre foods I wasn't doing any treatments any conditioning or moisturizing my hair in between styles or oiling my scalp I wasn't doing any of that when I first started taking care of my hair granted I was young I didn't really know how to but then I started watching a lot of videos on YouTube of how to take care of my natural hair and I and I was kind of inspired to try to use different products on my hair because I really didn't like the grease that I'd been using for years on end. It made my hair feel very hard, very like brittle. I naturally have like coarse hair, but that grease does something to my scalp, girl. I just I had to get rid of it and I didn't know how. It took a couple years before I started using the Palmer's olive oil and I haven't gone back since, but it took a while for me to get there. Anyways, I remember watching the rave videos of people bragging about how, or not necessarily bragging, but just kind of speaking on their experiences using coconut oil. So I went and bought a bottle of coconut oil. Coconut oil is not really that expensive anyways. I think I got one for like two bucks and I use it on my hair and it did really well for me when it came to finger detangling my hair but when that thing would dry I, I would feel like my hair would be falling out of my head in the sense that it made my hair feel so stiff and around the same time because I felt like coconut oil was working so good on my hair I felt like it was working only because people said it was supposed to work and it really did help with um when it came to detangling my hair I really felt like it made my hair super duper um malleable and just very very soft while the oil was still warm because i used to apply warm oil to my hair as it dried out like i said before it made my hair feel very brittle and i realized that shortly afterwards but you know my naive brain was like oh everybody's saying it works it must work you know in every single product that you can get it in so i went to the dollar store and i got myself the coconut suave shampoo and conditioner and then i got myself a small container of the Palmer's olive oil grease and I used those three products for 
like three years the first three years of my natural hair growth journey but anyways i never really considered myself to be a product junkie i wasn't I'm fortunate enough to have a bunch of money to spend on products and I know you know people at different stages of their hair care journey have higher or lower finances and I was on live yesterday with a young lady and she just explained to me how she has so much products that are suggested by people here on YouTube and that she just doesn't use them and it made me feel really really bad because you genuinely don't need to use that much product on your hair it's not necessary to have 15 different products on your hair and I do understand that every single product is not made the same but they essentially do the same things and um, I never really fell into the rabbit hole of buying a bunch of products even with the coconut swab shampoo and conditioner I grew to not like them but I still finished using them before I started trying to buy new things but I will admit um, like two years ago a year ago I fell into the rabbit hole of oils I got I became very obsessed with oiling my scalp even though I've never done that throughout the beginning in middle of my hair growth journey I just became very very obsessed with like peppermint oil and because they just sounded pretty and I'm just like oh they sound so natural and they sound so nice they must be good on natural hair but then after a couple of months I started realizing that I wasn't even picking up these oils because I don't really be using oils on my hair like that unless I'm doing a hot oil treatment which I haven't done in a really long time and I really need to actually do one soon probably do one next year but essentially what I'm trying to say is that you don't need to be using all these excessive products they're highly unnecessary and and pretty much if you put 10 shampoos next to each other I guarantee five of them will do the exact same thing and then you'll see a hint of a difference with the other five I mean I do understand that there are some shampoos that make certain people's hair more brittle than others but once you find what your hair likes and I'm an extremely big proponent of knowing your hair density and knowing your hair porosity. I feel like those are the two biggest things when it comes to natural hair care and it'll help you to avoid buying so many unnecessary products for your hair. Once you know the thickness of your hair, how your hair responds to moisturizers and whether your hair likes thick or thinner products, it'll make your natural hair care process so much easier and in my opinion it will kind of diminish the amount of products that you feel the need to buy. And if you find it a little bit hard to kind of minimize the amount of products that you find yourself buying all the time, just try to limit yourself to a certain amount of products every month or a certain amount of products every quarter of the year. So maybe like buying two different new products every month and try to see if that could help you minimize the amount of products that you're buying. But all in all, when you're first starting to take care of your hair, just be very mindful of the money that you're spending on buying all these products don't let people convince you that just because it works for them it'll work for you as well everybody has a different hair chemistry your hair and my hair are not the same just because it works for me does not mean it's gonna work for you just because majority of the people here on YouTube or even social media in general or your family your mama your auntie just because they're raving about how good of a product castor oil or coconut oil or olive oil um, fill in the blank if you have to not to bash any of those products but just because you see that people are raving about it and it's getting a lot of hype doesn't necessarily mean that it'll work for you so yeah just try to avoid buying a bunch of products that people suggest to you especially here online because half the people that suggest products to you do it for a check i'm all for making the coin you know go ahead and pay your bills girl but you don't have to shove products down everybody's throat and expect them to buy all the time it's not i just feel like I just think it's so inhumane to think that your hair needs 45 different products to be quote unquote healthy or voluptuous or thick or anything like that. It's just absolutely unnecessary. In my opinion, the most basic and necessary things that I feel like people need on their hair for healthy hair growth is water to wash your hair or to moisturize it if needed be, some sort of shampoo or cleansing rinse, um, some sort of moisturizer. And if your hair likes it, some sort of oil or grease. And everything else, in my opinion, is secondary. It's not absolutely necessary. But I do understand that there are certain products that are not necessarily targeted, but they're created for specific styles. So, you know, edge controls created for your edges and hair gel or mousse or whatever it's created for when you're styling your hair or whatever. Girl, I don't be getting my hair done after so long. So I'm just making a wild guess. Yeah, and when people suggest you a product just try to take it with a grain of salt analyze their hair density or their hair texture and just the overall chemistry of their hair compare it to yours and try to avoid buying so many products you do not need that many products there's no reason this is a reach but like 
there's no reason why you should have more than 10 products. I just feel like at that point, girl, you just want to be broke. And natural hair products are extremely expensive. If you got 20 bucks to spend on a new product every day, <sighs> seek help, please, because that is not okay. And, and just a small disclaimer, because I know some people take my words very literally, even though sometimes I obviously be joking. But if you have the money, by all means, do you woo. I really do not. It's not that I don't care, but it's none of my business what you do with your money. Um, it's just my opinion. I, I just don't feel like a lot of products on natural hair is necessary. If you can, then try to avoid buying excessive products or things that work on somebody else's hair. And you know, darn good and well ain't gonna work on your hair. Alright, so the next thing I feel like people should try to avoid when taking care of their natural hair is excessive trimming. I know within the natural hair community and even beauticians or people who take care of hair as like a career their mantra a lot of the times is if you want it to grow you gotta let it grow which i do believe you can't keep holding on to like straggly dusty split end nasty crusty looking ends i've seen a lot of situations where people will get a little bit carried away with the idea of having to cut their hair to have it grow long or having to cut their hair to make it blunt to be healthy quote unquote healthy i mean i've spoken about it before on my channel i don't remember exactly what the name of the video is but i've spoken on it in the past and i don't in my opinion i don't think cutting your hair makes it grow faster i do think trimming your hair at the ends just allows you to be able to manage your hair a little bit better than it would have if your ends were crusty and i say that because your hair doesn't grow from your, the ends of your hair your hair grows from your roots your scalp well out of your scalp i should say so cutting your hair at the ends is not going to force the roots to be like oh my gosh i feel like i just lost five inches let me grow 10 inches back that's not how hair growth works unfortunately i wish it did and i really do feel like people have this false understanding that if they cut their hair then it'll grow faster i feel like in my opinion when i do trim my hair once a year i only trim my hair once a year because i don't feel like my hair is unhealthy i don't feel like i do anything throughout the year to warrant me to want to cut my hair every month like I, I don't think my ends are like strangly or dusty or crusty or anything i mean i do have some parts of my hair that are shorter than others because of my own personal mistakes but i don't straighten my hair out enough to see the unevenness in my hair i quite frankly just do not care but nonetheless i really don't think that my ends are unhealthy to the point where i need to cut them off every two weeks i was speaking to this girl the other day on through live and she was saying how she hasn't been seeing a lot of growth on her hair. Um, she tries trimming it, but trimming doesn't work. Every time her hair gets to shoulder length, she says it just stops growing. So she trims it so that it can, it can be quote unquote healthier. And I'm like, girl, if you're cutting your hair every time you grow an inch, you're just canceling out the growth. Like it doesn't make any sense in my opinion. So I suggested to her, maybe stop doing so many trims on your hair. Just, just like wait for a longer period of time to pass by before you decide to trim your hair. I feel like it's so unnecessary to have to trim your hair every month. Unless your hair is, you know, in desperate need of trims. Like if you're transitioning or if you're just noticing that the ends of your hair are thinning out for whatever reason, may it be something medical or just something like stressful and etc. Um, aside from those reasons, I, I feel like it's absolutely unnecessary to have to constantly trim your hair to make it healthier. All in all, I just suggest that you guys try to avoid trimming your hair for no reason as much as possible because you're just cutting unnecessary length off of your head. And if you do decide to trim your hair because you feel like you absolutely need to, I personally always trim my hair while it's dry. I never trim my hair while it's wet or when it's curly because I feel like I take too much hair off my head when it's wet. When my hair is in its curly state, it's already shrunken as is. So when I'm cutting it, it's just like, I'm making it much shorter than needed be. And like I said before, I usually try trimming my hair once a year and I don't even go all in with the trims. I usually don't cut more than like a quarter of an inch or half an inch at most. I never go more than that. But I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I do get a little bit scissor happy. So I'll trim my hair today and then a couple days later, I'm like, oh, I want it to be shorter. I want it to be shorter. I try not to do that. So I had the scissors for myself so I can't find it. Or I just steal my boyfriend's and then I give it back afterwards so that I don't cut my hair. I just want you guys to understand that there's no amount of cutting your hair or trimming that's gonna make your hair grow faster. Like, you can't make your hair grow faster by trimming it. One of the biggest things that helps natural hair to grow, in my opinion, is to leave it alone. In addition to, I feel like I never speak about diet. I've always been into like, you know, working out, eating good or whatever. And I feel like I'm going to try to incorporate that type of stuff on my channel. Because, I mean, this is so off topic. If you're bored, just skip to this time frame when I'm on the next subject. But anyways, um, what was I even saying? 
I forgot. Anyways, I've always been into like, you know, health workouts and stuff like that. And I really do enjoy going to the gym. Recently, I've been going a lot more lately, like consecutively. And I really do enjoy it. And I do feel like the things that you consume, um, things that you drink, does play a major factor into your ability or inability to grow healthy hair. If you're eating a bunch of junk food, a bunch of greasy foods, a bunch of non-nutritious foods, if you're not drinking water, or if you're not eating fruits or anything of that nature, it'll it'll definitely have some sort of negative effect in the quality of hair that grows out of your head. So that's all I have to say on that topic. I don't know how I got to food on the trimming topic, but hey, sometimes I get off topic. I really apologize. All right, so the next thing I want you guys to try to avoid when taking care of your hair when you're starting out is to try to avoid letting people tell you what to do with your hair um as hypocritical as that sounds as i'm telling you things to avoid try your best to take everybody's opinion about your hair with a grain of salt you know what i mean if somebody tells you 10 things realistically speaking you should only be doing like one or two of what they tell you no one in this world knows your hair better than you know your hair unless you absolutely do not know how to do your own hair and you just struggle with doing anything to your hair then i can understand how your stylist might know your hair a little bit better than you but realistically speaking nobody knows your hair better than you know your hair you know how your hair reacts to water you know how your hair reacts to a comb you know how your hair reacts to certain products you have to think of your hair as if it's the most beautiful piece of artwork that has ever touched the grounds of this earth or the museums of this earth you have to think of it just like that you have to think of your hair as if it's the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen in your life as if you created it yourself. You're the artist of your own canvas. You know every single detail in that canvas, what you had to brush over, what you had to paint over, what you had to take out, what you had to put in, the, cl the colors that blended in to make that specific color. You have to think of your hair just like that, as if it's your own personal artwork. When somebody comes up to you and looks at your artwork and says, um, you shouldn't be doing that, you should be doing this, you shouldn't use that color, or you shouldn't use that brush, you should use this brush or you shouldn't stroke the brush this way, you should stroke it that way. You have to determine within yourself, hey, do I like stroking my hair this way? Do I like coloring my hair this way? Do I like painting my hair like this or that? Are the critiques that these people are giving me, are they gonna reflect well with my art? That's exactly how you have to think of your hair. You can't just let somebody come in and just suggest all sorts of things for you to do with your own personal hair because nobody knows your hair like you do. And I don't understand a lot of times we can lose passion and we can lose inspiration and we just need a little bit of help so we go out and look for suggestions on you know how to complete or perfect our art or even how to take care of our hair um, for this analogy if you're getting my drift. But you have to go in with the intention of I'm going to use what they say and incorporate my own thoughts and understanding of what my art is and just take other people's opinions about your hair with a grain of salt. For example, if I say for my artwork, I need to have trees in the background because it makes the sky look brighter. My painting is a picture of um, nature or whatever and your painting is a picture of your family inside of a house. You can't paint a tree in a house. Trees don't grow in houses. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Um, some things just don't work for certain canvases and that's okay. You don't have to force your hair to like things. You don't have to force yourself to like things on your head just because it works on other people's canvases. It's okay to take people's advice and tweak it a little bit. For example, if me and one of you guys or another person in general has the same texture but our porosities are different a product like this tgin bottle right here will probably not work on your hair because your hair is low porosity and my hair is higher porosity so you probably wouldn't be able to use the tgin cream on your hair because it's a lot thicker than what your hair can handle so all in all what i'm trying to say is that when you're first trying to take care of your hair it's important to get inspiration and hear the people's advice on how to take care of their hair because i understand a lot of us don't really know how to take care of our hair and that's okay a lot of us are you know grown and we still don't know how to braid you know i know some people my age or even older who has grown their entire life going to the salon because they genuinely just do not know how to take care of their hair and that's okay and when it comes time to take care of their hair because they can't go to the salon they look to videos and they look to people's advice to take care of their hair you know what happens when they they don't have any understanding of their own canvases they start trimming their hair every couple weeks and asking themselves 
Why is my hair not growing? Why don't I see any growth? It's because you're cutting your hair more than you need to. And you're doing things that you don't need to do. And to piggyback off the point of not letting people convince you to do things with your hair that your hair doesn't really need, I also wanted, well, I wrote it down, but I forgot to mention it. It was supposed to be the point right before this one, but not letting uh, people convince you into washing your hair more than you need to or less than you need to. I know some people who have lower porosity hair that needs to wash the buildup off their hair a lot more often than somebody with higher porosity. That's just my observation. I don't know if that's, you know, real for everybody, but I can go a couple months without having to wash my hair, but I know a few people after the first two weeks or the first three days, they need to get the hairstyle out of their head real quick and they need to wash it right away because their hair just doesn't hold up that well and their hair will start to mat or start to lock up. So I do understand that there are some people that need to wash their hair often, but if you're the type of person that don't need to wash your hair every day, why are you making your life harder than it needs to be? You don't need to do it, so why are you doing it? You're doing it because people are telling you that's what you need to do when you know darn good and well that your hair doesn't need that. Personally, I don't really wash my hair as often as most people do. Most people wash their hair every two three weeks even after the first week but I wash my hair every four to six weeks and I have grown to accept that my hair can handle it and if my hair can handle it then I'm gonna keep doing it so yeah if your hair can go a couple weeks without having to wash it that's better for you because you don't have to touch it and you don't have to manipulate it in the process and I always suggest low manipulation hairstyles or low manipulating your hair if you'd like to see any sort of growth or in my opinion, it makes my hair healthier because I don't touch it and I don't strain my hair strands to the point where they feel like they need to fall off and break on me. But hey, different strokes for different folks. But back to my original point with not letting people convince you into doing things with your hair that you absolutely don't need to do. I wasn't necessarily convinced. I feel like my sister, every time she's seen a video on the internet, she would just do it. Like if they told her to go steal some aloe vera from across the street, that girl was stealing some aloe vera across the street to do her hair. And if they told her she needs to buy mayonnaise to put on her hair to make it softer, she gonna buy her some mayonnaise. Like she was a, a true product junkie, I shall say. I don't know if she's like that anymore. I hope not. But she was really a product junkie. I never really fell into that rabbit hole because personally speaking, I'm just a very lazy natural. I do not touch my hair when I don't need to because it takes a long time to do my hair. Like I've been doing my hair for the past, oh, it's only been three hours. I've been doing my hair since nine o'clock and girl, I'm not even, I'm not even halfway there yet. I'm almost there, but not even halfway there. It's, I started at nine and it's now 12, 24. So I understand that it does take a lot of time to do my hair. So, so whenever my sister would be doing all these treatments on her hair, I just sat back and watched her because I'm not about to experiment on my hair, okay? Another thing that I also wanted to encourage you guys to not do when you're first starting to take care of your hair or when you're just taking care of your hair in general is just avoid being jealous of the next girl. It is a very nasty trait to be jealous or envious of anybody because what do they say? Um, what's that quote? Jealousy is a thief of joy because it absolutely is. It's one thing to look at somebody in awe like, oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. But when you start minimizing yourself and thinking that they're more gorgeous than you instead of saying, oh my gosh, she's pretty, but I'm pretty too. Just because somebody else is pretty doesn't take away from your own beauty. Just because one person's hair is whatever you consider to be long or voluptuous or whatever, doesn't take away from your own personal beauty because you don't know what that person had to do to get their hair to that length. You don't know what happened in their life or if they had alopecia at one point and then their hair thrived afterwards. You don't know what happened in that person's life to get their hair to that length. Growing natural hair is a very time consuming and a very patient process. You can't rush the process and when people try rushing the process is when they start becoming product junkies and becoming and just in general becoming a little psycho in the head so just try to avoid those things i'm supposed to be doing this as i speak let me, let me part my hair really quickly anyways i hope you guys understood my analogies for this point i do think it's very important to be able to acknowledge something acknowledge this beauty for example, like, well, another analogy, an elephant and a flamingo are two beautiful creatures. They're majestic in their own ways, but just because the flamingo is a little bit more pink and a little bit more delicate and, you know, tinier than the elephant doesn't take away from the fact that the, the elephant is beautiful in its own, you know, special ways. I do really like elephants. Um, I think they're very pretty creatures. I would like to see an elephant in real life, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. When I was younger, oh, this little tangent, I'm sorry. But when I was younger, I had this mentality that like, if I've never seen a animal in real life, then it probably doesn't exist. But then I grew out of that because, you know, cameras, people are real, I hope. I hope I'm not living in a matrix, but I have yet to see an elephant in real life, but one day I will. 
if they even exist by the time I get there. But anyways, that was my last point. Um, after I do this last braid, well, this is second to last braid, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of my head off camera. And then I'll put in the beads. I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me do my hair for the next four hours anyways. I don't think you guys want to see that anyways. So I'm just going to do everything off camera and then come back and show you guys a full look. Because the point of the video wasn't for you guys to... Well, it is for you guys to see how I do my hair. But I just really wanted you guys to have a just idea of some of the things that you should try to avoid. And if you can't avoid, you know, all of them, just try to avoid at least one thing. I was going to put combs on the list, but then I realized, like, combs are more useful for people than not having combs. And I do understand that finger detangling is hard for a lot of people. And I just felt like it was a little bit biased to do that. But yeah, I don't want you guys to feel like you need to take every single one of the bits and pieces of what I said today to the heart. Just take it with a grain of salt. Do as you will with what I have to say. Like what works for me may not work for you and that's okay because my canvas and your canvas doesn't look the same. And that doesn't take away from the beauty of your canvas and it doesn't take away from the beauty of my canvas. We just don't have the same canvas. And to reiterate the points that I made in this video, um, the first one was not over manipulating your hair, not touching it when you don't need to, not doing all sorts of styles when it's unnecessary every couple days, as well as not putting too much tension on your hair because that could cause your hair to break. In addition to over manipulating the hair, I also spoke about excessive products and I do understand that we all have a phase in our natural hair growth experience where we just go haywire with the amount of products that we have or the amount of products that we're putting on our hair but in my personal opinion I don't really feel like we need more than 10 products and that is pushing it in itself so just try your best if you can to avoid using a lot of unnecessary products that you don't need or try your best to not buy every single product that's suggested to you by people online who are paid to sell products so that's all I'm gonna say if you need the product then by all means get the product and the ones that you do have try to get rid of them like give them to your neighbor that you think it might work on their hair and if they try it doesn't work then they can just throw it out but it doesn't make any sense to just keep holding on to all these products it just makes your brain that much more chaotic in addition to the excessive products and the over manipulation i also spoke about trimming your hair excessively excessively if you don't need to trim your hair you don't have to feel pressured into trimming your hair it's unnecessary in my opinion to trim your hair every couple weeks or every month in my opinion you should be trimming your hair either quarterly semi-annually or just simply annually it doesn't make any sense to be trimming your hair more than three to four times a year in my opinion but if you feel the need to trim your hair more than that then go ahead and do you boo i really do not so i don't care what you do to your hair but it doesn't really affect me very much what you do to your hair. If you feel that it's necessary to do something, just do you, okay? Just take my advice with a grain of salt. I also briefly spoke about washing your hair unnecessarily too much. Like, I don't know, when I was younger, I felt like I had to wash my hair so often. Well, really I didn't. Um, I've grown to understand that my hair doesn't need to be washed more than once every three to four weeks. And I can go even longer if I want to, but I don't because I just don't feel like it's the best for my hairs. And I also spoke about not letting people tell you what to do with your hair. Whenever people give you advice or suggest certain products to you, take it with a grain of salt. You need to look at their hair texture. You need to look at their canvas and see if... What's on their canvas will work on your canvas, the colors on their canvas, the brushes that they use on their canvas, or the strokes, how they paint the bodies or the, the objects in their canvas, how that will apply to your own canvas. You don't have to use every single brush that a person uses on their canvas on your own painting. It does not, that's not how art works. You can't just, you can't just plagiarize somebody else's work, you know what I mean? So. Whenever people will say, oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever used on my hair, take it with a grain of salt. Don't go out there being like, oh my gosh, it's going to work for me just as well as it does them. Because their hair chemistry might be so much different from yours and you don't even realize it looking through a screen. And the last thing that I spoke about was trying to avoid being jealous of somebody else's hair. Specifically, I did use a lot of analogies in this video, but I hope you guys understood everything that I was saying. It's very important to be able to look at somebody else's hair and be like oh their hair looks nice but my hair looks good too you know what i mean just because somebody else's hair looks good doesn't mean that your hair doesn't look good where it's at right now you don't know personally what it took for the person's hair to get the way that it is and like i said earlier in the video jealousy is a thief of joy if you can't find beauty within yourself you're going to be a very insecure person as you get older and it's just not a cute look girl it's just not a cute look 
If you guys have any further things that you feel like naturals should probably try to avoid as they take care of their natural hair, please let me know down in the comment section. I'll be interested to know what you guys feel like people should avoid. And like I said earlier, I do think, you know, if you can, people should try to avoid using combs on their hair. But I know a lot of people just can't deal with the amount of time because it does take a lot of time to finger detangle the hair. Um, but in my opinion, I feel like it's worth it because the amount of breakers I, I used to have back then doesn't compare to what I have now because I don't really have that much breakage anymore. I'm going to show you guys towards the end of the video how much hair I lost though, so we shall see. But like I said just recently, I'm going to go head off camera and do this whole side of my head. It took how long? It took exactly four hours for me to do one whole side of my head. Granted, I was recording, so it did take a little bit longer because I'm trying to get, I don't know, I'm trying to like pose for the camera so I don't look too crusty, but this is how it looks down here. And this is how my ends are looking. Um, whenever I get to the ends of my hair, I usually just twist it so that it's not so hard to unbraid when I'm taking my hair out. Um, back in the day, I used to braid my hair down to the tip or down to the ends and my hair used to rip off every single time. So ever since then, I just stopped doing it and my hair doesn't break as much. I'm starting to like it. I think it's gonna look really, really cute with the beads. I'm in love. It does make my hair look really flat though. This is what I imagine if I ever got a silk press or if I actually flat iron my hair, this is what I imagine I'd look like. Very mole rat. I don't like it at all. But the beads will spice it up. So I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Mm, mm, mm. All right, guys, so I just finished doing the other side of my hair and this is how it's looking like. But it is five in the morning right now. I've been doing my hair since nine. I don't think I'm gonna finish these beads for another hour and a half. I should have probably started doing my hair earlier. I'm so sleepy. You can probably tell in my eyes. I don't know. I don't know, I'm just so tired. I wanted to show you guys how my hair looks like in the back as well. So this is the back look. I'm about to fall asleep. Hopefully I don't, but like, I'm so tired. I'm so hungry. I just wanna go to sleep. And I have to take a shower after this because my body's gonna be so greasy. Girl, I'm going through it, okay? I am going through it, but I'll be right back. All right guys, so I'm currently editing. I'm just realizing that I have the biggest piece of lint on my lips right now. It's low key kind of embarrassing, but I don't really feel like voicing over what I'm trying to say. So I'm just gonna let this clip be in here. The piece of lint will be gone in a few seconds, but I just, I don't know how that piece of lint got on my face, but I managed to see it and take it off. So I really apologize if you feel uncomfortable because I feel even more uncomfortable and embarrassed at the fact that it's even there. So I apologize if you made it this far and had to witness this huge ass piece of lint on my lips. It doesn't even help that my lips are huge as it is, but it's whatever. I do not care. Thanks again for making it this far, by the way, and I really appreciate you guys. So let me go so you guys can finish watching the video. All right, guys. So I am officially finished with my hair. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you for sticking around and watching because um, you didn't really have to. Since you stuck around, you get to see how it looks like all around. So yeah. Um, it is currently 6.30 in the morning. My phone is extremely greasy. I don't even know if you guys can tell the time, but 6.30 in the morning. I'm about to go take a shower and fall asleep. Might go eat though, cause I'm kind of hungry, but I'm just so tired. Um, there's something else I wanted to tell you guys, but I forgot. So, oh yeah, my, how much hair I lost. So this is the total amount of hair that I lost. Um, it's not that much hair in my opinion. I feel like it's pretty average. So I don't really think this is that much hair. Anyways, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you for clicking on this video and watching. I hope I hope you were able to learn something from this discussion that I decided to randomly have today. So, so if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding anything that I said throughout this video, definitely leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer. And I'll see you guys next time.